And I, I sort of like saw like the way that I would start this video out if it were me, it's a totally a suggestion, you take it, leave it. Um, is what all started this for me was, was my love of magic and movies, you know, which, and the thing that's great about magic is, is it's not just a trick, it's, it's a trick with story. My journey to become a professional maker started when I was uh, still in high school. I built models and, and did all kinds of uh, miniature work at the time and I was obsessed with magic and special effects and I started working for a company that was a props and special effects company. I started out as an apprentice and I swept the floors and cleaned the shop, organized the tools, and but I got taken out on every single set because I was the, the, the gopher, the handy kind of person to have around. And then when I started my company, we still did a lot of freelance work for film and television, but more and more we started to do theme parks and themed attractions. And now 90 to 95% of what we do is custom fabrication for the theme park and entertainment industry. So we're building the, the elements that flesh out the world, that give it character. So like when we're building the Harry Potter stuff for Universal Studios, we're building all the little magical devices and items that are going in the display cases and the store windows. Technology plays an important part in what we do because there's a real specificity and, and accuracy that's required in a lot of work that we're doing. But we're always incorporating that into our traditional fabrication techniques. We, we never abandon the, the classic techniques of woodworking and sculpting, metalwork, welding. It just gets incorporated into plasma cutting and CNC fabrication, uh, 3D printing. It's all uh, another tool in our toolbox. So in all the work that I do, my background in doing props and effects for the film industry and getting that mechanical engineering degree with the theater degree, for me it's all about making as a vehicle to storytelling physical objects that help you know, convey a message that tell a story. We get to use our making, our technology to help us tell stories and that's an important aspect of what I like to do. And that's what really got me interested in doing the zoetrope was my fascination with stop motion animation which has always been a, a kind of a passion to study for me and now I get to tell a story with a kind of a version of stop motion animation through a zoetrope. So a zoetrope was an animation toy that was developed during the 1800s and at the time there was no filmmaking or animation going on. The technology hadn't developed yet but they started to put a series of images in a spinning cylinder. And so we, we try to make sense of the physical world by, by processing a series of still images and we perceive it as motion. But what I really like about the idea of a zoetrope is it captures a moment and with the, the 3D you can build an entire diorama and instead of looking through a tiny slit, you can experience it in a larger view. And the strobe light is synchronized with the spinning. So as each wedge or frame of animation lines up, the strobe light will synchronize and fire. So you don't see the spinning and that blur of motion, but what you start to see is this series of images, these series of, of three-dimensional sculptures come to life. And it's like watching a live action stop motion. The way to become a master in anything is to make it, throw it away, and then make it again. So with this first zoetrope, having uh, never seen one in person, there was a lot to learn about timing, about little details of the animation, about the technical issues. And with the, with any kind of project you're going to do, you're going to make mistakes and you're going to learn from them. And this, this project was definitely one where I, mistakes were made, and especially given the time constraint, we didn't have a chance to experiment and try out things. We just had to dive in and get it done. And sometimes that's the best way to learn. So that way you can make those mistakes and move past them. And then you get ideas and you get experience. So that way you can do it again and do it the way that you wanted to or do it better. So with this uh, being our first one, it, I definitely learned some really neat tricks. And now I'm gonna incorporate those into the, the second version 2.0. 
Even though I started out with this marvelous mechanical making making machine, the next iterations may lead me somewhere that's even more marvelous.